Hello students, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Your English Teacher. I am Ritu Bhandari and today we will be studying the 7th chapter of Vista's textbook for class 12. The title of the chapter is Evans Tries an O-Level and it has been written by Colin Dexter. It's important for students to have read the whole chapter beforehand so that they can benefit from this video. As I explain the chapter, I would be referring to instances and sequences with that aspect in mind that you have already read the chapter, you know the end and you know the sequence of events in the chapter. Only then you will be able to benefit from this video. So let's understand what is this chapter about. It's a detective fiction. It deals with the account of Evans, a jailbreak who actually is a criminal and who's already escaped from prison three times is known as Evans the Break. It deals with his smartness, his foresight, his planning and it also refers to a lot of keen observations that he has been taken into, he has taken into account while planning his meticulous escape. Evans is able to outsmart the prison authorities. And the story overall deals with the clever escape of Evans and how the governor pursues him to catch him. Evans is ready with his wit and charm and always proves that things are not what they seem to be. So we must never jump to conclusions hastily. Those who have already read the chapter will understand that even till the end of the chapter, we realize that it is Evans who is going to have the last laugh. The governor seems to have been in control, but actually it is Evans who has been able to fool him because he had already judged what all could have been the possibilities of his getting caught. So let's understand more about the author, Colin Dexter. And then we will go on to the PDF of this chapter. Colin Dexter was born on 29th of September 1930 and he uh, breathed his last on the 21st of March 2017. He is a British crime writer who is known for Inspector Endeavour Moss. So those who would like to read more chapters written by him, more write-ups and more stories written by him, you can maybe go and read this Inspector Endeavour Moss and Inspector Endeavour Moss appears in detective novels authored by him just like in Agatha Christie we have Hercule Poirot and Miss Maple so here the protagonist of his novels is Inspector Endeavour Moss these novels were written between 1975 and 1999 and were adopted as a television series also till 2000 Dexter has received many awards and accolades, He's in, including two silver draggers, two gold draggers and a Cartier diamond dragger for lifetime achievement in 1997. He was also conferred in 1996 the uh, McCavity Award for his story Evan Tries and O Level. So uh, let's look at that also. In 1996, he was honored with the McCavity Award and in the year 2000, he was appointed as an officer of the Order of British Empire for his services to literature. So, we can understand he, uh, as, a, as a child, as a student, I might go and visit one of his uh, books where um, Inspector Moss would be the lead role and it should be interesting to visit. So now after this we will go to the PDF file. Again I am going to talk about the chapter as if and relate to instances as if you all have already studied it. So please do ensure when you continue with this video you have already read the whole chapter. So now let's look at this chapter, Ivan tries an O level. To understand this chapter, I, I hope you've all read it. I've been reiterating this requirement before you attend this video. 
So let's look at the characters of this chapter. We have uh, the Secretary of Examinations Board, the Governor of HM Prison, Oxford, James Evans, a prisoner, Mr. Jackson, a prison officer, Mr. Stephens, a prison officer. And those who've read the chapter will understand that Jackson is the senior officer um, uh, uh, between these two. Uh, the Reverend S. McLaren Invigilator, Mr. Carter, Detective Superintendent, he also plays an important role. Mr. Bell, Detective Chief Inspector. So all these characters play a very important role in the chapter because it's all about Evans trying to escape from prison. Now over here it says before you read, it gives you a thought provoking question. Should criminals in prison be given the opportunity of learning and education? Now when you listen, read this, there has to be some kind of a perspective that comes up to your mind and you keep that to yourself and we'll see how that develops as this chapter proceeds. So all precautions have been taken to see to it that the O-level German examination arranged in the prison for Evans does not provide him with any means of escape. It was in early March when the Secretary of the Examination Boards received the call from Oxford Prison. It's a slightly unusual request, Governor, but I don't see why we shouldn't, why we shouldn't try to help. Just one fellow, you say. So this is an interaction between the governor of the Oxford prison and the secretary of the examinations board. Now, as a reader, when I look at this, I cannot make out whether the secretary is a female or a male. But as we proceed with the chapter, we'll understand whether she is a female or whether he's a male. So that's it. Chap called Evans. Started night classes in O-level German last September. So usually when we start the chapter and we read a chapter's title, we have some idea what is the chapter going to be about. So the O level seems to be some kind of an examination level and in particular to German language. Through this passage, if I, I, I just minimize the size of the text and on this page we will understand the the interaction between the Secretary of Examinations and the Governor is regarding how the examination has to be conducted, especially keeping in mind that Evans is the only person, only prisoner who has chosen to study German throughout these four or five months he's had in hand and he intends to give the exam. Now to arrange for the examination of a, of a single person that is maybe a little uh, tough for them but it is also easy because all they end up doing is allowing him to give the examination in Evan's very own cell. Now despite the fact he's only one, one cannot forget the fact that he's also carrying a background and of being successful in escaping three times and since he's been successful in escaping three times that means that's why he has also earned the title Evans the break. So keep that in mind children and when we look at this paragraph, the one I am highlighting right now, it talks about uh, how he perceives Evans. So the Secretary of Examinations wants to know the background of this prisoner and whether he's going to create any any trouble during the examination and this is the answer that the governor gives. He says there's no record of violence. He's quite a pleasant sort of a chap, they tell me. Bit of a card really. Now bit of a card really here means that basically he he has he's a star. He has something that stands out. One of the stars at the Christmas concert imitations, you know, the sort of thing, Mike Yarwood stuff. So he's also one of the most um, you can say standout performance at performers at a Christmas concert and he's good at imitations and mimicry. Now if you have read the chapter again and again I'm telling you that this makes a lot of sense here. He's good in imitation. So we will realize that this this quality of his is able to allow him to escape because 
we understand that he has escaped not as the McClary who walked in, but the injured McClary who was left behind. So the imitation, imitation means mimicry. So he's able to pass off as um, as the McClary who's been left injured, whereas actually it is Evans himself. So you know that sort of thing. That's what he says. The governor is giving this kind of a feedback to the secretary. Now, Mark Yawood stuff is again, Mark Yawood is the name of a performer. So he's saying that he has similar kind of talent. No, he's just a congenital kleptomania. Congenital kleptomaniac means a person who is who cannot refrain from um, from stealing small things, and so it doesn't seem to give that kind of uh, seriousness to this habit. So he says he's just. The word just means that it is something that need not be made paid attention to. The governor was tempted to add something else, but he thought better of it. He'd look after that particular side of things himself. If you look at the text over here, that has been in italics. Now, when a writer, when the author has def deliberately put that in italics, you need to understand that particular side of things refers to the something that the governor wants to keep to himself and he does not want to share it with the secretary and that particular side of things in retrospect it refers to the fact that he has been successful in escaping from prison so he doesn't want to share that with the secretary at this moment so presumably you can arrange a room so the secretary goes on with an invest uh, conversation and then they come to a conclusion that there's going to be one of the parsons from St. Mary Mags to invigilate and that turns out to be McClary. McClary is the parsons from St. Mary Mags and he is going to be the one who is going to invigilate Evans as he gives the examination. Fine, fine. Yes, they seem to have a lot of parsons there, don't they? The two men chuckled good-naturedly. Now, this is the point where I understand the secretary is a male because he says the two men chuckled good-naturedly and the secretary had a final thought. At least there's one thing. You shouldn't have much trouble keeping him incommunicado. Now, incommunicado at times, children, you don't understand. Incommunicado means when you want to ensure that nobody talks during the examination, that is incommunicado. And in this case, any busy vans, with whom would he try to talk? Because one is an invigilator and the other is himself. So whom would he try to talk to? And therefore, it, there will not be much trouble keeping him incommunicado. The governor chuckled politely once more and reiterated his thanks and slowly cradled the phone. So these small indications, cradle the phone also gives an indication that yes, this is of that era where you used to have those kind of phones where you pick up the receiver and then you cradle it. So uh, these small intent, see literature has to speak beyond the text. It has to make you understand what era, it gives you an insight to what, what social conditions uh, the chapter has been written in what is the backdrop of the chapter so these are small indications that help you understand that and then this exclamation mark after Evans is like saying oh good lord this is this is an exclamation remark made by the governor and when the governor says Evans it means that oh good lord I don't know how I'm going to conduct this examination so going on to the next page over here the next page over here is giving us a deep insight. The first paragraph gives a deep insight to what extent Evans has been able to escape the prison thrice already. That's why he's called Evans the break, as I told you initially also. And therefore, there has to be a lot of security. And the governor of Oxford is going to take this very personally because he's it's a kind of, uh, kind of if, if Evans is able to break from the prison, he, it will be an embellishment on his pride, on his stature. So the governor is definitely going to take care of that. So the governor seems to have a, a soft heart somewhere. He's a good for a giggle gullible governor. This is a question that usually comes towards the end of the chapter. But 
since I'm assuming you've read the chapter, I'm going to make references to that in between. So he says that there's a slight possibility that maybe Ivan's even wanted to learn German language. So keeping all that in mind, he he's ready to allow Ivan's to sit for the exam. Now at 8.30 p.m. on Monday, that's the 7th of June, Ivan's German teacher shook him by the hand in a heavily guarded recreational block. You need to understand it was in the recreational block that was where Evans was taking these classes from this German teacher. And on the previous page, they have also mentioned that since there was only one person taking the class, it was almost equal, equivalent to a tuition class. And had he wanted to learn the same language once he walks out of prison, it would cost him a lot. So here it is in the recreational block that he has been having these German classes, taking these German classes from the German teacher. Those again and again I'm saying, I am going to explain the chapter in retrospect. You need to understand it, keeping in mind that you've read the chapter. I won't be repeating this again. So actually the German teacher is a accomplice of Evans and all these months that he's, they've been studying in the recreational blog, they've been planning the escape. And that comes as a shock to the governor because later he realizes, oh, I did not check his credentials. So that's why it says a good for a giggle. Good for a giggle means worth laughing at. Gullible. Gullible means somebody who can be made a fool of. So Ivan's German teacher shook him by the hand in the heavily guarded recreation block. And this is a conversation they had. Gutten Gluck, I don't know. This is a pronunciation the correct German pronunciation for good luck. Now over here as a reader who reads it for the first time, he will understand that this good luck is mentioned for good luck to escape and not good luck for passing the examination. And the very fact that Evans is unable to understand that means that he has not spent any time in learning the language at all. And he says good luck for tomorrow, the good luck is to escape. And then they, he says, oh, I, uh, he says, oh, thanks, I mean, and then he speaks that word, thank you in German. I can't pronunciate it right now, but pronounce it right now. But whatever Ivan says, thank you in German with great difficulty. That means he's not spent time in learning the language at all. You haven't a cat or in a hell's chance of getting through, of course. Now here as a person who's reading it for the first time would think that again he's talking about getting through the exam but actually he's talking about getting through the prison and escaping from here. And then Ivan says, I may surprise everybody. So if you realize the figure of speech which we talk about, pun, a pun means that it means something whereas it has another definition as well that has been applied here by the writer. At 8.30 in the morning, Evans had a visitor. Now, the rest of the paragraphs over here on this page, they're talking about the interaction between Jackson, as I told you in initially, as a senior officer, prison officer, and Stephens, as well as Evans. Basically, it is between Jackson and Evans. Both of them do not share a very good relation. Jackson is uh, uh, actually loathes uh, Evans. And he, on the advice of the governor, has been asked to ensure that there is no sharp object in Evans' cell because that is where the examination is to be conducted. In case the examination is being conducted and some sharp weapon is found, he may use it as a potential weapon to threaten McClary and escape from the prison. So that's the whole idea behind it. Now this interaction over here gives us an insight to what is the relation that Jackson and Evans shares. Evans and Jackson do not share a good interaction, a good relation because somehow Jackson doesn't like the way he dresses up. He even asks him why the, why the, what is the reason you're wearing a red white bobble hat and he calls it a filthy looking red white bobble hat and then Ivan says that it was it was something that brings him good luck and he wanted to wear it for the exam. See, this all in retrospect again, 
all this was keeping in mind the fact that Evans knew Jackson had a little bit of humanity in him. So he said that, could you please, buried, on the next page if you look over here, buried somewhere in Jackson was a tiny core of compassion and Evans knew it. So a tiny core of compassion is what he played upon. He said that, let me wear it because it's a lucky charm for me. And actually, what was the reason that he did not want to get rid of the red bobble, filthy looking hat was because otherwise it would have been clear that he has deliberately cut off his long hair. The long hair that that Jackson earlier used to loathe. Now, what was that reason? The reason was because later towards in the chapter, Evans has to has to impersonate as McClary, the McClary who is to stay back injured. So the McClary who stayed back injured is the one whom he is going to impersonate and therefore there's a possibility if Jackson sees that that is the reason that uh, if Jackson sees his uh, closely cropped hair, he would get suspicious. So he took care that the razor was taken out the nail scissors, the nail file was taken away, the nail scissors was taken away. These were specific uh, steps taken by Jackson on the advice of the governor that there should not be any sharp object in his cell which could be used as a potential act weapon against McClary. Now, why did this create a lot of problem? Taking away the razor and the nail scissors, etc. because it was a great problem for Evans to shave off his head. He didn't have proper scissors, so what did he do? He used the razor blade to cut his hair and hide it under the red bobble hat. So this chapter talks about all uh, that Evans tried to evade with Jackson and Stephens. Now, over here in the next, on the next page, which is the fifth page of this chapter, we'll understand that over here there's a description of the parson Stuart McClary, who is to leave his home in Broad Street. Now, he is supposed to, it's at 8.45, the readers are informed that at 8.45 he is getting ready and he has worn a black overcoat and a short clerical hat that provided some protection from the steady drizzle which had, uh, which was uh, predicted and uh, he was carrying a small brown suitcase which is of great importance later in the story as well. So, it contained all that he would need for his morning duties. Now, what were the contents of the small brown suitcase that is of great importance because they, the suitcase is referred to twice in the chapter. First is at this time where the contents are told to us. It's a paper envelope, a yellow invigilation form, a special authentication card from the examination board, a paper knife, a Bible and a current copy of the church times. Now this is something that has to be remembered because you have to understand as a first reader when I'm reading a detective story I need to keep my my eyes open and keep uh, track of any particular detail which is at times very subtly given or which is at times even very deliberately given by the writer. Again in this chapter, as I've always been telling in my classes also, the timings of the chapter are very important. The two-hour examination was scheduled to start at 9.15. So if you have a paper and pen with you, you can note that down and write down 9.15 was the time when the examination had to begin. Now whether it begins at that time or not, we'll get to know. So over here, Evans, what was he doing at that time? He was lathering his face vigorously when Stephens brought in two small square tables, lathering his face to shave his face and set them so there were two small square tables that were brought and there were two chairs and the more less battered one was placed in front of the table which was nearer to the cell door that was where the 
invigilator McClary would be sitting and on the other chair which would be facing the door that is where Evans would be sitting to give the exam. So Jackson also came in between and again they had a kind of a conversation and over here I would like to say Evans says Jackson tells Evans take those pinups off. Now what do the pinups refer to? It refers to the photographs of girls and uh, scanty clothes because th these are not required and these are not presentable. So Evans turned away and said that I was going to take them down anyway. A minister isn't here, a chap coming to sit in and he says, how do you know that? Now in retrospect again, it seems that Evans already knew his, who was going to come to invigilate the examination. Uh, there's a possibility he could have known that because he had some contact with the outside world but actually the reason was that he was the one who had planned everything with the help of the German teacher while he was studying in the recreational block. And over here, what answer does he say to Jackson's question, how did you know that? He says, well, I signed some forms and I could not, uh, could not stop myself from reading what all details were given there. So Evans carefully then, because he was lathering his face, he carefully drew the razor carefully down his left cheek and left a neat swath in the white lather. You must have seen your father shaving and therefore it leaves a neat swath in the white lather. And therefore there's a discussion that occurs between both of them again. And then Ivan says, why did they have to bug me in the cell? Bug me in the cell means uh, 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 the governor is very, very meticulous. He doesn't want any embellishment on his, uh, on his uh, pride and on his image. And therefore, he is going to ensure that nothing goes amiss. So what has he done? He has even made arrangements to, to, to record everything that is going there. Now this is again that era where there were no cameras. This is an era where you could only have the voice transmitted to your room. So the bug me refers to the transmitters that had been set up in his prison and he says it's not a very neat job. It means that I can easily understand that this has this room has been bugged. It could have been done in a much more neater manner which could have been inconspicuous inconspicuous means not noticeable so they're not they don't honestly think i'm going to try to they will try to what try to escape but uh, jackson says that definitely they're not going to take any chances with you why you again has been in in uh, italics because it refers to the fact that he has already tried to escape three times from prison and there's a possibility he would try to do that again okay so Evans has been able to detect the bug but he wants to know who is the one who's going to listen in. and then Jackson says that it's obviously going to be the governor because he doesn't want to actually take any chance with him. So in a very very uh, very sarcastic manner he says just one more thing Einstein so he says Einstein and that's a sarcastic remark for calling Evans as that and then he says that you better keep your nose clean. Now this also is has a double meaning here. It's a pun kind of a thing where, where he actually refers to the fact that he should not get himself into trouble and then Evans in his mind thinks that he already has number two handkerchief lying ready on the punk. Now those who've read the chapter will understand that the number two handkerchief plays a great role because when he is going to act as the injured McClary who stays behind, he is going to need that cloth to uh, swab, swap up the blood that has been thrown on his head. So this, this all has a lot of relevance when you look at it after you read the whole story. So here another point that if, if uh, what kind of a person is Jackson here you can find another streak of compassion in Jackson because he says good luck old son and uh, thus McClary walks in and the time has come when McClary is going to be uh, 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 taken to the cell and they are going to sit 
there and in, he's going to sit there and invigilate the examination. So he enters the room. McClary enters the cell. As I told you, the time is very important. It's 9.10. So note that down. It's 9.10 when McClary entered and the governor switched on the receiver. By receiver, we refer to the transmitter. And he goes through what all instructions he had already given to Jackson and Stephen and makes it clear that definitely um, Jackson must have taken out all the sharp objects. And he keeps on thinking. He's, he's uh, going through all instructions he had given. And then he realizes that there is a possibility that McClary might have been carrying some kind of a sharp object that could be used as a potential weapon against him. And therefore, he suddenly sat up sharply and he says that the exam at 9.12, he reaches for the phone and asks Stephen and Jackson to get McClary to him. Why does he do that? Because he realizes that there's a need to frisk McClary. And therefore, he frisks him and then he asks him what is that hard thing in, in, his, in his overcoat. And then he McClary responses that it's reading glasses and there's a special case. Now, when you look at this portion again in retrospect, this is where Evans gets an extra pair of reading glasses. Because when Evans stays back as the injured McClary, he has to have the same paraphernalia that would make another person take him up as uh, McClary. So Jackson quickly reassured him and bending down on the land, landing thumb flicked the catches on the suitcase. He opened the suitcase. So this is a case where McClary has been called at 9.12 by the governor to come and get himself frisked and get all the contents of his suitcase checked. And then the suitcase, as I told you earlier also, the contents of the suitcase were talked about when McClary at 8.45 was supposed to walk away from his home. And now again, we have a detail of the contents of the suitcase. And what are the contents of the suitcase now? It's the Holy Writ. The Holy Writ refers to the Bible, then the church times. And But one of the objects in McClary's suitcase was puzzling him a lot. And he wanted to know what was the smallish semi-inflated rubber ring for. And then it seemed as if he was making fun, but McClary did not. Hitherto amiable demeanor. Now, McClary's hitherto amiable demeanor refers to till now. Hitherto means his demeanor, his projection, or his uh, behavior till now, which was very amiable. Amiable means very pleasant and uh, adjusting and that suddenly was ruffled ruffled by this tasteless presentry why tasteless because he realized that he is being made fun of for this semi-inflated rubber ring and he says that he suffered from hemorrhoids hemorrhoids are piles and therefore when he's sitting for a long time at a length he needs the semi-inflated rubber ring to be kept on the chair. Then, ja then Jackson realizes that he has hurt his feelings and he apologizes to McClary. So that's it. He just found a paper knife. He took that away from, the, from McClary and then he sent him to the cell where the examination had to be started and it was already 9.18 a.m. So again, I'd like you to go through what were the contents of the suitcase earlier and now what are the contents we find. Now as a very avid reader or as a very careful reader, we'll be able to spot the difference in the contents of the two suitcases and at this point only you would have understood that there is something amiss but that doesn't happen as the first reading of the chapter. So in retrospect again I'm saying that over here the contents of the suitcase differ from what were the contents of the given in detail. So now in the next video you will find an explanation of the subsequent pages and again I would suggest go through what we have read till now 
and uh, you will benefit from the upcoming videos till then goodbye and happy studying